When I was a little boy, I remember uh, my parents uh, taking my brother Lyle and I out to the uh, living room and plunking us down in front of the TV at about at periodic intervals. And they started at about age five. And they uh, sat us down and sometimes mom would bring some hot cocoa. And we'd sit there and we would watch the most amazing things. We would see uh, giant red or white and black rockets the size of uh, skyscrapers hurtling into space behind giant columns of flame. We saw men uh, walking in space. We saw uh, spaceships going through uh, the void between uh, the Earth and its nearest neighbor and uh, men walking on the moon. Amazing, startling things that uh, remain vivid in my mind to this day. Um, today, March 3rd, these were, these were, this was an amazing time. It's an amazing time and I think people that were around at the time, everyone remembers those events. Today, March 30th, 2010, is just such a day. But I don't think that very many people are aware of what's going on today. And um, I want to, first I want to tell you what's happening today and then briefly tell you what's happening today and then briefly tell you what I think is a problem and a suggestion I have to uh, help people uh, become aware of what's happening. Today is um, uh, the day that um, they're going to be um, injecting uh, the largest amount of energy into uh, the particle accelerator, the uh, giant, the uh, Large Hadron Collider at uh, CERN in uh, by the border of France and Geneva. Uh, the, the CERN project is a huge project involving a, a large number of European nations working together to basically uh, probe the uh, innermost structure of uh, the uh, particles that make up the universe. It's an amazing idea and it's the story behind it is, is truly fascinating. Uh, briefly, just, um, I'll keep it simple and I'll keep it brief. It has to be simple because it's, I'm not capable of fully understanding it all. So uh, basically what uh, is happening here is the universe is made up of particles, little bits and pieces of things. And uh, you can take and slice those particles up, get down to a little, uh, you get a little piece, bit of something, get down a little farther, you can see the molecules that make it up. Get down a little farther, you can see the atoms that make it up. Get down a little farther, you can see the protons, neutrons, and electrons. And for most of us, that's about where we begin to, everything goes a little bit gray. Now, it, it's important to be able to know these things. If we didn't know about molecules, there would be no chemistry. If we didn't know about atoms, there would be no atomic science. Think how our uh, lives would be different if we didn't have the sciences of chemistry and atomic physics uh, at our disposal. So, the question is, what happens if you get a little further down and you break things up even more? What do you see at, at a smaller level? Well, that's what CERN is all about. And the problem is that you can't, it's not easy to break these things up. We don't have a knife that's sharp enough or an instrument that can basically cut things and see what's smaller there. So. What, scientists have found a, a pretty clever way of, of actually finding out what's inside. If you take a, a little particle and you throw it against the wall really hard, it breaks up and little bits spit out all over the place. And you take a snapshot, a little picture of those little pieces as they're flying away and you can get a pretty good idea about what uh, that piece was made of. And that's exactly what's happening at CERN. However, the idea of throwing a, something at a wall is just a, is just a small concept compared to the amount of energy that's needed to do what they're doing. Um, what they need to do at CERN basically is uh, take uh, little bits of matter, ramp them up, spin them up, and we're talking about matter not energy here, ramp them up and spin them up to uh, speeds approaching the speed of light. So you get one, you have two circles, big uh, 27 uh, kilometer, I think it is, 27 kilometer circle and you get it spinning up in one direction, a little bit a cloud of particles in one direction, and then you get another uh, uh, a 27 kilometer circle of beams going the other direction at near the speed of light, and they're crossing like that. And then the trick is to then aim those two beams together so that those particles begin to hit each other. That is when you begin to see these particles break up into smaller and smaller pieces. Why is this important? Well, it's important for several reasons. First of all, as I mentioned before, uh, by knowing what the uh, universe is made of, what the particles, uh, what the particles are, what particles make up the particles, we can create new sciences and new technologies and improve and enhance uh, life as we know it. There's, of course, there's dangers and there's pitfalls to that. Nuclear weapons, for example, are one example. Some people think that uh, a black hole will swallow up the Earth. I don't know about these things, but I'm all for the advantages of uh, probing the nature of the universe. Okay. What else is there uh, that, that can be gleaned from this? Well, on a, on a, on a philosophical and in an, 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 an a scientific way as well, we can also learn about what this is all about. Uh, the more that we know about 
what makes up the universe, the closer we get to being able to answer the question of, uh, of, of what nature is and how law, the laws of nature work together to basically make this whole wonderful um, uh, act of, uh, of nature and creation work together. Well, and uh, that's basically the, the, the goal of the grand unification theory, to basically find out what all of this is about. Now, as you can see, I'm not doing a very good job of describing what's happening at CERN. And that's because I lack the intellect, I lack the knowledge, and I lack the uh, word power to basically put these concepts uh, to good use. And that's, so what I'm about to say next uh, applies to me as well. Today is the day uh, at CERN, on uh, March 30th, 2010, that uh, one of the big steps is happening. They're basically, it's like trying to go to the moon where we did it in steps. The Russians and the United States worked in the space race and pushed each other to, towards higher and higher levels. CERN is doing a big step today. They're going to ramp up the accelerator to a higher energy level than any has ever been achieved in human history. And uh, this is going to in, in turn allow us to see deeper. Okay, so this big day today. <clears throat> if you go to the CERN website, and here's the problem. If you go to the CERN website and you look at the videos that uh, they have there, and these videos are on YouTube as well, um, what you'll basically see are, are, there are scientists talking about what's happening. And my complaint my, is that scientists may not be the best people to talk about this stuff to the general public. I'm not the best person to talk about this stuff to the general public because I don't understand it well enough. I know it's big, but that's about all I know. What I, my suggestion to CERN is that if you're going to broadcast this stuff to the public, and I definitely think you should, you need to spend a little time and find the right people for the job. Okay, getting scientists to come out and talk to this to the audience, to the general public about what you're doing, um, is all right as long as they're as long as they're addressing other scientists. But if you're really going for the general public. Like for example, today's video, the video that or the video that was released a couple of days ago, talking about the event today. The highlight of the video was when the woman said, "We've just ramped the uh, the accelerators up past uh, 2,000 amperes and 3.5 tera electron volts." I mean, that doesn't do anything to me. I don't know what a tera electron volt is. Uh, maybe a few of you do, but I don't know what it is. What's the difference between one tera electron volt and 3.5 tera electron volts? What's 2,000 amperes? It sounds like something written on the side of the wall where I plug my washer in. I don't know what these things mean. Therefore, they don't touch my heart. What you need to do, sir, and I think, is you need to go out this little time, find someone the likes of Carl Sagan, or, or, or Stephen Hawking even, or heck, even Garrison Keillor, someone who can tell a story, someone who can understand what you're doing and uh, tell a story. And I really mean it, even Garrison Keillor. I mean, if he can get the, he's not a scientist, but if he can get the facts down and then he can relate it in his magical way, maybe that could capture the public's attention. If you, if you can get a spokesman or a spokeswoman before the camera who can tell the story of what you're doing, the, the fascinating, amazing thing that you're doing there, this collection of, uh, of European nations, this international organization, uh, probing the, the depths of, of reality, of the depths of the natural world in ways that have never been done before, that will have long-term implications for humanity, that will possibly real, lead us to the grand unification theory, the dream of Einstein. If you can get someone that's telling that that's happening and how it's happening, I think you'll get a response from the world at large. You will from me. Um, I need someone to explain this stuff to me. I'm asking you to please bring us someone who can explain it to me, to me in a way that I can understand it. I'm not, I'm not doing a very good job here, and that illustrates the fact that we need somebody like that. So, congratulations, CERN. Um, your, your efforts are um, incredible. I'm, I can't wait to see what, sh what, will, what will be the result today as you attempt to uh, bring the accelerator to even even higher level, highest energy level ever achieved by humanity. Um, I can't wait to see what's going to happen. I, I, I hope that I can understand what's happening. And I hope that uh, eventually you guys get somebody who can, who can be your spokesman and can share that with us. Well, there you go for today. Um, my, my little bit uh, about what I, what I think is an amazing thing and how it can be uh, improved uh, to make it better for everyone at large. Thanks for stopping by to take a look. See you later.